All right, everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. It is a new year. It's the same me. It's time to update a couple of these older videos and uh, go over some things. And I'm going to start with tuning and wiring solutions and what I think and have my thoughts changed on anything. And is there anything new out there that's worth considering, in my opinion? Um, so last year I did a video on the Holly versus HP tuners, and it was fairly controversial. Um, but some things have changed since then, and there are some newer options, and there, you know, I've learned some more things. So let's dive into this. Um, first and foremost, I know that a lot of people are about to get their tax returns, and you know, they're just hood rich for three weeks and really want to go through some metal gymnastics to justify why they need to buy the Terminator X. Um, from a financial standpoint, the Terminator X can do very few things that the average person is going to actually do that the stock ECU can't. I, I know everybody out there in LS swap land is going to run twin turbo someday and just really, really needs to do Nitro, progressive nitrogen control by RPM and you know it's going in NA for now but they're they're going to put quad turbos with a with a pro charger on it later um and the truth is they're not going to do any of that right so what you buy kind of depends on what you want to do what you're trying to do and, and you have to be, I say it all the time you have to be honest with yourself what are your goals if you're actually trying to go race competitively and you need, really need, and are really going to use, and like right now you're looking at buying a progressive nitrous controller because you really use nitrous all the time already right now, the Terminator X starts to become attractive, especially if you only have one LS swap vehicle and you're only going to have one. I have two. So for me, with the way that my stuff's configured with Daryl and Jewel, I would be into this for $2,600 just for both to run and drive NA. If I wanted to do boost by time or, or nitrous on Daryl, excuse me, um, that would easily escalate to over $3,000. And, and that's what they don't tell you. That $1,000 price, that's for no transmission control on a 24X you know, standard truck motor. So if you're running a turbo 350 or a manual, that's fine. It's not that big a deal. But when you get into the cost of just to use HP tuners, for instance, uh, $300 for the MVPI2, and then another $90 for credits to tune it, or maybe they're 100 I don't know. Um, and they might be 50 each. I, I'm paying like 46 each from the tuning school. But anyway, let's just call it 100 bucks. You're, you're into the MV, MPVI2 for $400 and then you need your wideband to compete to, to really compete it with against the uh, Holly which has a wideband comes with it um, I think I paid like $160 for my AEM so we'll call that $560 and then you're gonna pay 300 bucks for a harness um, if you don't rework your stock one yourself which is probably the best option, but if you don't want to do it, $300 for a harness. So now you're into it for 800 bucks to have a running and driving vehicle. Um, so you're within spitting distance of the Holly, right? You're, you're within 30%. If you're not running a manual transmission and if you're, or if you're not running a electronic overdrive transmission, if you are, you have to step up to the X Max for thirteen hundred dollars. Now you're only within sixty percent of the price. You're only halfway there, but somehow, some way, people manage to do mental gymnastics and, and think that sixty percent of the way there is most of the way there. I, I guess it is technically fifty-one percent is most of the way, or more than that. And then again, if, if it's the only vehicle you have, it is kind of attractive, but you got to remember with the HP tuner stuff, 
Um, you can use this on more than one vehicle. Maybe you don't have more than one, but maybe you might have a friend. What I did when I got mine is I went ahead and advertised doing VATS deletes and unlocks. And I was doing them for like $200 a car and I got, and, and mine was $800. Mine was the MVPI one uh, pro. So mine was a lot more than what they are now, but I got all that money back within the first six weeks of having it. So I can deduct that cost. But again, that may not be you. You might not like that. Um, it's kind of your decision what you wanna do but financially, it's hard to justify for the average guy swapping a Junkyard 5.3 with a cam and some headers to do the Holly. Um, if you're going to go run Drag Week or, or something like that, then maybe you might use these. But you need to be aware that the $9.99 price is a catch and it's really $1,300 or more because you need more parts even. Um, if you have drive-by wire and stuff, it goes up even higher. And then you need more parts to do the boost by RPM, boost control, progressive nitrous control. That's all add-ons. So it's hard to get out the door for less than $1,500 on the Holly. And really, all I want you to do is be aware of that and know that and just take it into consideration. Um, if you're just trying to get your 5.3 to run and drive, I've done the videos on Tuner Pro and LS Droid. It's a really, really viable option if all you really need to do is delete VATS and maybe play around with the PE a little bit. Um, even with the Terminator X, you have to tune to a degree. Like you're tuning, whether you realize it or not, the interface is a little nicer. And I have the software here, I've opened it up and played with it. It's a little bit nicer interface, but uh, I'll open this up real quick for you. You still have to know what you're doing. You still have to know tuning. So I take to it easily because I already know tuning. Apparently Holly uses these ICF things to uh, set up the different areas of the tune. But you still have to know tuning. So no matter what, you're going to learn tuning. Whether you know you're learning it or not. Um, Tuner Pro is not super user friendly, but it is free. HP Tuners is more user-friendly and there's a lot more support out there for it, but it costs money. It also comes with excellent data logging software. If you have more than one vehicle and you're going to try to tune uh, like forced induction or anything like that, HP Tuners is really still the way to go. I do the Tuner Pro vids and I get into it and I mess around with it because it's budget oriented. But for data logging, it's very difficult. You can data log in Tuner Pro RT if you can find the ADX file, which does exist on my Facebook group if you look in the file section. Um, but it's a clunky interface. It's difficult to use. It's just not really that great of a setup. Um, but it will work if you just need to go in and click VATS off. But really, most people doing a swap, the average guy doing the average swap with a cam and headers, should really just buy a can tune, which is really how this Holly works. Like when you open it up and it builds a tune for you, it's not building a tune for you. It's just pulling from a database because there's only so many ways to skin a cat. There's only so many cams you're going to put in a 5.3, only so many pounds of boost at, at whatever RPM. Um, and it just picks the closest one and then learns from there, which is all you do when you're tuning. So... With Tuner Pro and an OBD link and reworking the harness yourself, it's possible to get an LS engine in running and driving for is fifty dollars for the OBD link. Um, it's like you're gonna spend maybe twenty thirty bucks on on harness and tape and fuses and stuff like that. So for under a hundred dollars, if you're a handy guy, you can do the Tuner Pro OBD link tune it yourself. Um, and be done with it. If you want to take a step up and you want to buy a harness, you know, on a high end, you're going to be into HP tuners and a standalone harness for eight or nine hundred dollars. And then you can use the HP tuners with a wide band. 
but no progressive nitrous, no uh, boost control, nothing like that. But then you can use the HP tuners on your other vehicles, which I do. Um, not only do I have two LS swap vehicles, but Clifford, my pickup with the 8.1, that's also tuned with HP tuners. So I, I got a lot of value out of it personally. With the Holly, if you really want to do this crazy stuff and ramp in boost or, or, or ramp in nitrous, it's going to be $1,000 minimum to get into it with a manual transmission or a turbo 350. You're going to need extra parts to do most of the cool stuff. Um, you're still going to have to learn to tune. You're going to have to learn to go into the software and play with stuff. You're, you're still going to have to learn to mess with it and work with stuff. You're not just going to like grab a turbo off eBay and slap a holly on there and do wicked burnouts and not have to mess with anything. Wiring it is no easier than wiring uh, one of these standalone harnesses. It's pretty much the same. You got to tie it to ground in 12 volts in a couple places. So you don't really win anything there. But you do win, you know, and the interface is a lot easier to use. So that that's a bit of a win for people. So you're going to start at $1,000 and you're probably going to push, you know, $1,800 if you want to actually do drive-by cable or drive-by wire with an electronic transmission and do like boost versus time or, or progressive nitrous. If you want to do all that stuff, you're going to push that cost all the way up to 1800 bucks easily. So just be aware of that. Um, other than that, those are basically your options. I don't really find Fitech to be much of an option anymore. They have horrible customer service. A lot of people are out there complaining about it. Uh, Edelbrock has some stuff out there, but they don't offer transmission control. That's the main hangup of most of the aftermarket stuff that's out there. There's no transmission control available. Uh, micro Squirt or Mega Squirt will allow you to use a Micro Squirt to control the transmission, but by the time you're, you're all in and you buy everything you need, you're twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300, you could have just had the Holly. Um, for a bare bones, like you just want it to run and don't really care, uh, have a turbo 350, turbo 400, whatever, and you don't want anything else, the micro squirt itself is pretty hard to beat. Um, you can get into a micro squirt for like 300 and there we go. 340 bucks um, and then you have to add your own junkyard wiring for the coil packs and stuff like that but there's no trans control nothing fancy like if, if you have a bare bones like I had a trail rig that I ran on micro squirt on that's a good value too so hopefully that helps talking about the different options what they are what they aren't there's a lot of hype out there there's a lot of fans out there um, I really want to like the, the Holly Terminator X. I really want to figure out a way to justify getting it for myself. But I can't. Um, I just can't. Maybe you can. But just be aware that it doesn't do all the fancy stuff out of the box. Um, it is pretty neat. I, if, if this were $750, I'd be all in on it. So... Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you.